In our politically correct world, we find ourselves using phrases that at some time in a revolution were difficult for some people to say. Changing from the word Indian to Native American, asking people if they preferred to be called black or African Americans, and then abiding by that request, and now being asked by solid citizens of this country to be referred to as patriotic American Muslims. Words that a large swath of America believes are impossible to use in the same sentence, but that doesn't mean one simply stops trying to get the point across. Our guest is president of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy and author of Battle for the Soul of Islam, Zudi Jasser joins us. Dr. Jasser, always a pleasure to get a chance to talk to you. You spoke at CPAC recently, and your titled talk was Political Islam, How Patriotic American Muslims Defy the Radical Islamists. You know as well as I do, the three words that people will see are patriotic American Muslims. As I pointed out, how do you get it across to people that those three words can coexist and those people do exist? Well, you know, and I think this is why I gave this talk, is that uh, we're in an existential battle against the theocrats of Islam that dominate Iran, Saudi Arabia, the Brotherhood of Egypt, the Islamist radicals of ISIS in Syria, and ultimately even the nonviolent uh, Islamists uh, uh, globally that we see in the United States dominating many of our Muslim communities. And I think patri patriotism is about defending liberty, is about equality quality of all under God is about a rejection of the Sharia state and it's what our Muslim reform movement is all about. So I think it's important that Americans begin to be able to separate between Muslims as a whole, all those who practice the faith, and the theocrats of Islam, which are the Islamists. And once we can thread that needle, we will ultimately be able to engage the Muslims that are part of the solution and reject or at least uh, marginalize those that are part of the problem, which are the theocrats. And I, and I think the, many of the folks that I met at CPAC are much more becoming much more educated on this uh, uh, significant distinction. And when you talked about being patriotic, I would imagine that some people might have been a little surprised when you pointed out that you think there should be a pause on all immigration. Because as you correctly pointed out, the refugees could include intelligence ops of the Assad regime, Russia, Iran, people who aren't just Muslim, but those who are indeed coming here to do damage. So that in itself, it's a little bit radical, but maybe it's exactly what needs to be done. Well, you know, we get all these reassurances from the State Department and from Homeland Security and others that these are vetted populations. And yet the very thing I'm talking about, which is jihadism, which is an understanding the fact that even before the revolution, at one out of nine expatriates uh, Syrians were part of the intelligence mukhabarat of the Syrian government. We've already seen the Syrian Electronic Army wreaking havoc on Washington Post, the New York Times, and others. So we've seen that they're trying to infiltrate and cause havoc to get our to get us out of the Middle East so that they can continue to take over and fill that vacuum that ISIS is creating. So we need to have a strategy that engages and, and is able to vet for jihadists and all of these types, and we don't have one, so we need to pause it. But I don't think we need to never. We need to pause it because, listen, I have I have a significant interest in that. I'm, I've got family that want to get out of there, that it's becoming, you know, unbelievable hell in these cities with chemical weapons and others. So I'd like to see our, our policy change, but first we need to pause so that it becomes smarter. Here's something that I also wanted to get your comment on, and this actually shocked me and a lot of people. According to a poll by CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations, Donald Trump has the support of 11% of American Muslims more than all the other Republican candidates combined. Now, Hillary Clinton gets 46%, Bernie Sanders 25%, but how does that strike you that Donald Trump gets it? We've had people on this show who have railed against Donald Trump for what he has said against Muslims. I wouldn't imagine anybody would vote for him. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's sort of bizarre in that, uh, you know, I think those of us who are looking for deeper understanding of that delineation between Muslims and Islamists have, have looked to other candidates. But I, I think the bottom line is part of it's the celebrity factor. The other part is, don't forget, Trump has a major interest in the Middle East, including Trump Dubai. He's had a uh, um, Saudi royal family that have rented floors of his uh, skyscrapers. So he has a very cozy relationship with many in the the Middle East. Now, it's the more wealthy ones rather than the uh, grassroots or the populist uh, uh, population. But I think at the end of the day, his rhetoric has been two-sided. It's been sort of uh, uh, nativist on the one hand, but on the other hand, it's been outreaching and, and embracing. So I think Muslims that aren't really looking at this ideological battle are going to lean towards him, surprisingly. 30 seconds. Reports out now that a growing number of refugees are giving up on Europe and they are heading home to places such as Syria. Does that surprise you? 
No, I mean, Europe was not ready for this. Uh, uh, millions that uh, uh, went right into Europe. Uh, so there's been a clash of civilizations. And when, when that clash happens, uh, I wish Europe would be more um, faced with a rule of law response rather than sort of this denial that they've had. But ultimately, they're going to go back. They thought that it would be warmer uh, findings for them. And uh, there has not been homes found for them, so they're they're going to go back. Now, where? I don't know. Already have millions in Lebanon and Turkey and Jordan. So, And I, they can't go back to Syria without a no-fly zone, so I don't know where they're going to go back to. But Europe is way over uh, brimming with refugees. Yeah, as as a number of them have said, it's better than anywhere else going back home. Dr. Zubi Jasser, always a pleasure, my friend. Thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. Donald Trump has a strategy that has not failed once in his drive to become president of the United States, and there's a good reason for that. We'll talk about it next on The Hardline.